Hi everyone, my name is Clay Maffitt and I am a Vault email archiving and retention specialist for the Google Apps for Education team. And this video is a quick overview and demo of what Google Apps Vault is um, and how that applies to educational institutions. First, let's do a quick overview of what Vault is. Uh, Google Apps Vault enables users to archive, manage, and preserve Gmail and on-the-record chats for information governance, e-discovery, and regulatory investigations. Um, this consists of three different components. First is archiving. That's basically taking your messages and on-the-record chats and securely managing them in place. Uh, so it's not duplicating data, but, a basic, but basically this is different than the archiving button that you might be familiar with in Gmail. Um, archiving in Vault basically makes it so that messages are sent to or messages are retained in a secure manner that allows you to access them as an administrator when the need arises. Um, a main component of that is retention. Retention is basically uh, the rule that you set for specific messages or all of your organization's messages uh, that's applied and essentially dictates how long those messages are being archived for. Um, so if your organization has a 10-year retention policy, which means that all messages that are sent and received need to be retained up to 10 years so that, you know, nine years from now, if there's an investigation, you need to be able to recover information regardless of what the end user uh, has done with it or whether the end user is still at your organization, you can still recover that in the event uh, that you need to. And then lastly, you have an e-discovery component. Uh, e-discovery is basically the process of going into your message archive, being able to search for messages that pertain to the investigation in question, uh, and then being able to export those so that the proper authorities uh, or the proper people can look at them and determine what to do next. Um, why do schools and educational institutions in particular need Vault? Uh, the first one is the Federal Rules of Civil Procedure, as well as, you know, open records requests. That basically is a federal law that makes it so that any federal employees, which is all employees of public institutions, um, you need to be able to access and report on any communications that they've sent. Uh, whether those communications are internal or external, uh, you have to be able to produce documents and electronically uh, stored information. Uh, retention requirements, according to this rule, vary from state to state. It basically depends on the interpretation that your legal counsel has given you. Uh, the good thing about Vault is you can have unlimited retention if you want. So that that covers uh, that component. Um, next you have internal disciplinary matters. Uh, I'm sure many of you administrators who've been working in education for a while know that sometimes an employee uh, might or a student might send inappropriate emails or send the wrong email with confidential information, etc. In the event of that, you're able to go in, uh, find that information, and report on it that way. Um, Along those lines, for students in particular, uh, bullying seems to be something that is getting more and more attention within uh, the educational market. And luckily, if any of your students are using Google Apps for Education for email and messaging and they're bullying each other and you get reports of that, you can go in and figure out you know, who is responsible and uh, you know, pass down any discipline to those students that you might need to. Um, lastly, there is the concept of data retention. Um, so data retention just means that if someone accidentally deletes something, you're retaining that information in the event that they need to re-recover it. So sometimes uh, an employee might leave your organization, you forget to transfer documents over. Um, the good thing about Vault is regardless of what that person might have done with that data, uh, you can recover it. So that's nice. Soon we'll also be launching uh, Vault support for Google Drive, so any documents and uh, you know Google Docs or files that you've loaded into Google Drive, uh, all of those will be able to be recovered as well. Um, lastly, for pricing for EDUs, it's ten dollars per faculty and staff user per year. You have to buy Vault for all of your staff members, so uh, you know every single staff member that you have that will use email over the next twelve months, you need to pay ten dollars uh, per user and for those users. There is no charge for student accounts, so once you've paid for all your faculty and staff, um, we turn on Vault for your entire organization, your entire Google Apps for Education domain, uh, with all the subdomains and multiple domains as well, and there is no charge for those student accounts and informational accounts and duplicate accounts being archived. Um, there is no personal provisioning, so 
If you uh, only have a requirement to archive, say, your board members or administrators, but you don't need to archive your faculty and staff, your faculty, um, we can't accommodate that. It's, it's sort of an all or nothing thing, nothing thing and that's just the way, uh, due to technical limitations and the billing decisions that we've made, um, that's, that's how it works for now. Um, if you grow by a certain amount, we have a 20% growth, growth buffer built in, but if you grow by more than 20%, you can reach out to us uh, and we can do a user increase midterm if you would like. So without further ado, let's get into the product demo itself. Uh, first, let me show you how it works within the admin console. When you go into the admin console, uh, you can go into admin roles. And this is where you can give people different capabilities uh, in dealing with Vault. So the super admin, uh, as you might be used to, sort of has God mode privileges, so to say, means that they can basically administrate uh, pretty much any function that you have within your Google Apps uh, for education environment. Um, and then you can create sub-admin roles from there. And then you can also have user-created roles. So if you look down here at user-created roles, uh, a lot of these user-created roles for this demo account are basically uh, different admin roles that um, are able to do different sets of things within Google Vault. So let's go ahead and look with the super admin. Um, let's look at the capabilities that a super admin has. You scroll down here in privileges and you see within Google Apps Vault, um, you can manage matters, manage holds, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, a matter is a investigation. A hold is uh, when you place someone on hold. It means regardless of what retention rules you have for that user, any data that you have from the moment that you put the user on hold uh, until you take them off hold, any data will be kept. So nothing will be removed, even if it passes its retention limits. Then you have searches, exports, retention policies. Uh, audits. An audit of your system basically says, uh-oh, someone's retention period was changed within the last month. You can audit that activity and see which Google Vault uh, administrator actually changed that retention level. Um, and then lastly, being able to view all matters. That basically means that any investigations that any Vault administrators have started, a super admin can access all matters. Now let's go to an example of a different set of privileges that you might want, say a litigator. So let's get, say that for this particular vault use, it is actually a litigation case. Um, so if we go down, you see that this user has basically no privileges within Google Apps itself. The only privileges that you've given the user is within Google Apps Vault. And the only capabilities within Google Apps Vault is to manage searches and to manage exports. Uh, so that means they can't view all matters. You create the matter and share that with them. And then within the confines of the matter that you've created, uh, they can manage searches and exports within that matter. Uh, so you can definitely granularly dictate what different users can do within Vault. And that's really nice because you know, whether it's a teacher trying to recover their data or a student's data, uh, whether it's a, uh, you know, board supervisor who's trying to look into a certain thing, uh, or whether it's a litigator or super admin, you can sort of granularly dictate who's doing what. Um, so now let's go ahead and dive into the product. Uh, the easiest way to access the product is to type in ediscovery.google.com. Um, there's no quick access from the Google Admin Console, the Google Apps Admin Console. Uh, it's easier to type this in, which is nice because it's sort of an extra level of security. That said, it is still single sign-on, so if you look up at the top, uh, I'm still signed on to my demo account, um, so it's not like I have to log in again or anything. So here's sort of the home page of Vault. Uh, here you get a list of all the matters. Because I am a super administrator, that means that I'm able to see all matters that have been created. So here at the top is the matter that I've created called antimatter, and you see that I am the owner. And it, it also says the last time that I accessed it. So I haven't accessed any of these other ones, and you can see all the different users uh, that have created all of these different matters. Um, so if I were to want to create a new matter, I just click on create, I name it and describe it, and it creates the new matter. Rather than creating a new matter, let's just go into the demo matter that I've created. Um, so here, the first step when you uh, create a matter or when you go into an existing matter, it goes into your holds. That's sort of the first option. Um, so here, we can check which holds I have. In this case, I only have a hold on myself. Uh, this says the date of the hold, so basically any time after uh, 10, 16, 2013, um, there, there have, has been no information that pertains to my account that has been removed. Uh, the query, so this is basically the rule, it says all mail. So you can actually put a hold 
on a specific user just for, say, sent mail or just for received mail or just mail that was sent to uh, internal email addresses. You can basically set all those rules yourself by clicking Modify Query. If I want to add more users to the hold, I can just click Add Users. And then the nice thing is that there is autocomplete. So all you have to do is, you know, start typing someone's name and it's pulling from the same autocomplete that you're used to when you, you know, compose an email in Google Apps. Um, so now let's go ahead into the search component. Um, here is your basic search. Uh, you can search for all data. Uh, which is the most common. You can also search for held data. So if you're holding, you know, five different users and you know that the only messages you're looking for have been sent or received from those five users or to those five users, um, you can just search within held data. And then lastly is unprocessed data. So that means that, you know, when you receive an email, a lot of times it's formatted in HTML and it looks really, really nice. Uh, but if you were actually to rip that down to its unprocessed data, you get a whole lot of more data in there. So, uh, you know, things that you might be used to getting with a, a raw email log, it lets you know a lot of those components. And sometimes that's useful uh, to search depending on the type of investigation you're under. Um, next, you can say which specific account. So let's say I'm doing all data. Um, it's not just my held users, but I do have a set of users that I want to look at. Uh, again, we get the autocomplete here, uh, which is really nice. So, you know, let's just choose one user here. Um, and then it's comma separated, so I can always choose more users after that. Um, then you set, set your date range. A lot of times this is really useful, you know, especially once people have been on Google Apps for Education for a while. All of your data might go back many years, so it's nice to, you know, let's constrict it to just the last month. So from the 1st of January up to today, which is the 29th. And then lastly, terms. And this is where you can get, you know, very, very specific about what you're looking for. Uh, these examples that it's got are good. For example, it has an attachment. Uh, it, it is sent, so it's not received. It was sent from someone in your organization. And then minus, the minus sign there means exclude. So anything that's in drafts, you're not looking for anything that hasn't been sent. You're just looking for things that have actually gone out. So you're excluding drafts uh, from, from your search. You can also get much more sort of uh, technical than that. There are lots of uh, even more uh, sort of complicated different things that you can do. Selecting a specific type of file type, for example, um, that's, that, that can all be useful depending on you know, how specific you would like to be in your search. Um, so that then before you search, you can do a basic search, which returns your results. Um, you can also just count your results. So let's say you're just starting this investigation. Uh, you don't know how many search results you might have for a search, and you might need to whittle it down because initially there's going to be thousands. So you can just count your results, and it'll give you that count. And you can get your count down to you know less than 100 and then run your full search. On the flip side of that, if you know that your search is exactly what you want and you want to go ahead and move to export, you can choose to export results. Um, let's say you have saved this search. Um, and then you want to create a new search that's similar, but you also want to keep the old search in place as well. You can duplicate your search form uh, because you can see up here on the left, um, you can save searches. So duplicating search form is nice if you want to, you know, have a few different similar searches that have a lot of rules and you don't want to keep on typing the same thing in. And then lastly, you can just reset the search form, which clears it. Um, so quickly, let's go into the example search I have. This is called money or cash for 2013. As you can see, this searches uh, for the terms money or cash. It's sent between uh, January, January 1st of 2013 and the 20th of December uh, 2013. And here we have our whole list of search results. So it's got the subject and a little preview of the message. It's got the owner uh, of that message. You know, sometimes it's sent by that user, sometimes it's received by that user. Um, and then lastly, you have the date that the message was sent or received as well. Um, so in this case, uh, let's say this is exactly what I want. We can go ahead and go to export and you name the export. To speed up this demo, I've actually gone ahead and exported this exact set of results. Uh, so let's go ahead to the export section right here. And here we go. We have our cash and money export um, that I ran on 129. It tells me the export date is 129. Um, we have 689 messages and it's 8.1 megabytes um, and it's exported by me. So if someone else came in and did an export, it would show that it was exported by them. Um, so here we can view the files that we have. Here's the metadata file. 
um, and a results count. These two files are basically informational that, that gives you sort of a snapshot of information um, about what's in your export. And uh, you also have a file checksums down here that sort of preserve or make sure that the integrity of the export's good. Um, but what you're really interested in are all of these different exports that have specific users' names. So you get a .mbox zip file. .mbox is just sort of a widely accepted uh, mail email format file. Uh, it's accepted, you know, in most courts of law as far as we know, but if you do want to change it to .pst or something like that, you're able to using a third-party utility. And then all of the files are in a lossless zip compression because a lot of times, even though it's lossless, it's nice to zip things because it cuts down the file size. You can imagine when you're exporting tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of messages, uh, it's good to save some space to, to limit the, the size of your export. You can download any of these individually, and then once you download them, you unzip it really quickly, and you'll just get the messages in the export that pertain to this specific user. Um, and that's really helpful. Uh, rather than having all users on one file, it actually is really helpful uh, in the middle of an investigation to kind of be able to break it down by specific users um, to help you narrow down your search. Um, so that's that's sort of a general look at what happens in a matter. Of course, you can share a matter at any time. This is similar to what you're used to with, uh, you know, Google uh, Google Drive and things like that when you're sharing between users. So I can share with any of these users as long as they have uh, as long as they are an authorized user. Um, they can access it. If it's not an authorized user, they'll click on the link and it, and it just won't work. Um, so that's sharing, and then. Lastly, let's go into auditing. As I mentioned before, sometimes things might happen within Vault that you didn't want to happen. So you can go in, you can say a specific date range, you can say specific users, again, it's autocomplete powered, um, and then you can select which action types you want to audit. So if you wanted to select all because things seem really wonky, then you download the CSV and you have a CSV file that sort of reports on every single action that was performed within Vault within your date range. Um, so that's a quick view of Google Apps Vault. If you are interested in uh, speaking with a Vault representative, please email vault-edu-sales at google.com. Again, that's here. I'll type it in here. It's vault-edu-sales at google.com. Um, and a Google rep will get back to you. And then if you're ready to purchase, uh, we can put you in touch with a partner to purchase. Um, or if you're a very large district, you can purchase directly from Google. All right. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, hopefully this has been informative. And if you have any you know, additional needs, let us know. Maybe we can add them to the video or we can answer them uh, in a separate email thread. Have a great day and we will hear from you soon.